all right everyone welcome back so the next very important topic uh, from the security perspective inside the aws and that is a multi-factor authentication so what is multi-factor authentication so whenever we try to access our uh, aws system we just try to provide the username and password so suppose somehow some con one get your username and password they can easily enter into your aws system aws account so in that particular case what uh, mechanism generally different companies has employed so far that is like a, apart from username and a password there has to be something more you need to provide in a different different manner in a very secured manner then only you are completely authenticated person to enter into a different system in this particular case it's a aws management console or maybe it's a programmatic access also okay so let me go to my aws dashboard and i would say iem dashboard so you can see as a part of security recommendation the very first ever recommendation they have provided like a mfa for root user add multi-factor authentication for root user enable multi-factor authentication so at least at the root account level this mfa should be enabled so currently it's not enabled so that's like a security recommendation but then there is a one green tick also that root user uh, has no active key that means if you haven't created any active access key for the root user that's a good thing so that uh, other person who has those key they just cannot use it although we haven't created those keys so that's like a very good sign from the security recommendation if you want to create uh, some other user who want you to give some programmatic access then you can definitely provide the uh, uh, with some limited access those access key okay now in this video our focus will be on adding this mfa for the root user then we'll see uh, for individual user also you can activate the same one okay so very first thing let me just click upon this add mfa and you will be able to see that is a part of security credential so within im we are at a security credential okay so device name how you are going to uh, do this uh, verification by providing the third stuff so there are three uh, different ways or a three different devices way you can authenticate yourself while multi-factor authentication is enabled okay so very first one let's say it's a pass key or a security key so let's say uh, mfa with pass key i'll just create one now very first option it says that uh, based on your existing stuff like uh, let's say if your pc or a mac has some kind of screen locking system or fingerprint identification it has a built-in or some face recognition inbuilt so you can take an advantage of those existing locking system of your machine and you can use those pass key or a security key as a third authentication factor that is nothing but a multi-factor authentication so let's just try to implement this thing let me press next and you can see security setup so in my case on my win i mean i'm currently running with my windows machine so you can see you can use uh, some kind of fingerprint authentication also or some face recognition also i'll just go ahead and let's see what other option it will ask so this will let aws dot amazon dot com to see make and model of your security that's perfectly fine so what they are expecting that insert your security key into usb port so some kind of security key uh, you can put it into your usb port and it will be automatically authenticated now in this particular case i don't have a facility for face recognition or uh, any kind of fingerprint identification so that's why uh, and that is not being uh, i mean pop up here otherwise you can use that thing directly add your as a third factor and just simply follow the instruction your mfa for one device uh, i mean will be activated okay so that is the one thing now uh, okay 
I just go back. Let me assign MFA once again. Next one will be authenticator app. So there are some authenticator app uh, through which you can always go ahead. So auth app and I'm just going to go ahead with the second option. Now this app you are going to install either on your Android machine or uh, I would say Apple phone. Okay. So there are some uh, list of compatible applications. So let me just go through those uh, apps. So currently the supported apps are on Android machine like a Twilo, Authy, Authenticator, Duo Mobile, Microsoft Authenticator, Google Authenticator, Systematic, VIB. Same way on iOS also similar apps are available. I'm just going to use this uh, Google Authenticator which uh, I'm going to install on my uh, Android device. Okay. So in offline mode, I'm just simply going to install this uh, Google Authenticator. So let me navigate to Google Authenticator and can I just simply install directly from here because this is the same account I'm using. Okay, so this is the device I'm using. So it's just going to install on my machine. Okay, so I have just now seen that it just started installing on my machine. Now, once uh, this is being installed on your machine, you can just go ahead for the second step that show your QR code and open this app on your machine and just simply scan for this QR code. Let me add some QR code, scan QR code and i'm just going to scan for it okay so once i scan uh, it just immediately displayed some uh, number so i'm just going to write this oops so once you uh, i mean you won't be able to write those thing within a matter of 30 second the new code will be displayed so just moment you got this code you can just simply put and after 30 second i mean you have to wait for 30 second and within a next after 30 seconds one more code will be generated that you need to add it here so i'm just uh, waiting for next code to appear here 621 489 okay and let me add mfa all right so you can see in a multi-factor authentication one uh, virtual way to authenticate my account that is mfa auth app being uh, registered now uh, rather than exploring about the third option what we are going to do let me just sign out from here and if i just try to log in with my root account once again it won't allow me to log in directly okay let me enable the sign in okay new sign in process okay let me sign in using the root user see i'm just going to sign in with my root user providing the password but then mfa code is required so mfa code now once i open my app i'll be having those mfa code ready with me okay i would open and then only i'll be able to log in into it so almost similar process uh, you have to go with uh, for any other options are also available uh, like uh, for any other apps like i mean to say if you whether you use on an ios device or an android device there are two mfa code uh, needs to be available here okay so that is the one thing now we'll just go back to oops uh, our uh, mfa that is multi-factor authentication which is currently unable so i'll just uh, go to my multi-factor authentication how will i go we'll go to security credential from top right corner and you can see this is the multi-factor authentication so there is a one more option we are going to uh, explore now so for now i'm just going to remove this part although uh, for the root user it's always a recommended practice to keep this multi-factor authentication let me assign mfa once again and now the third option i'm going to explore so this requires something like some kind of hardware so hardware topt token so if i just search for this on google 
there is some yubi key let me just show you some of the image so you have to buy such a kind of hardware and let me just go for totp kind of mfa although we won't we won't be able to perform the complete one so with this device you will get some kind of serial number located on the back of device you just provide this one and start your device after starting this device there are one code and then wait for 30 second you will get another code in this way you can add it so whatever earlier with this google authenticator app we have performed the same thing you are going to perform via some hardware devices okay but whatever google authenticator has done for us that is uh, in a very i would say cost effective manner because it's a completely free of cost uh, app and uh, it's a completely virtual by nature so currently we don't have any mfa assigned to it all three option we have explored now if i just go for individual user let's say john inside the john we have a security credential and on a console access enable without uh, mfa okay so let me just go to security credential and you can see exactly similar process you can apply for individual user also all three same options are available so you can enable this multi factor authentication at a root account level also or you can uh, allow for at a individual im user level also okay so that is all about uh, this video uh, we have learned about how to enable this multi factor authentication and what are the different options are available to go ahead one is like uh, with your inbuilt windows locking system which provides some sort of security key and you can insert some uh, hardware also from the outside uh, where it is just going to store this security key and you can just use those uh, pen drive or any kind of hardware device you can take it to any other machine and you can log in with your username and password other one virtual one completely we have uh, done the complete uh, hands on end to end demo that is with google authenticator app and the last one uh, you require this topt token complete hardware device the process is very similar and a self explanatory okay so that's all about this video i hope you enjoy listening to this video and please do like comment on my video and do subscribe my channel my study